Welcome back. The last time that I talked to you about water pumps, I was using the Bosch electric pump and I was testing it out with a PWM to see if I could dial back the power to it and make my charging system keep up with the load from the headlight as well as the electric pump. And I basically came to the conclusion that it would be the most beneficial to me if I didn't have to have any additional load aside from the headlight on my charging system because the MVT ignition doesn't really support much more than my headlight. Um, it's possible a lot of people have commented that you know like uh, you can just run batteries a lot of people with racing ignitions don't even bother to have a charging system they just run batteries and things like that again sometimes when I go to car shows it's quite a lot of riding around I don't want to have to carry uh, multiple batteries around to try and deal with this so I would like to look into mechanical pumps further and other options for mechanical pumps and I said there was some stuff up in the air so this is the solution that I'm thinking of next. This is a mechanical water pump that's used on some racing go-karts like shifter carts. And you can see it's about the right size for the scooter. The outlets actually happen to be the right size. They're for 5 8 or 16 millimeter hoses. So it works out quite nicely that way. As you can probably guess by the fact that it has a pulley on here, this is a belt driven water pump. So basically there's just a pulley mounted to the impeller shaft that rotates the impeller and that moves water. It's pretty simple. This has a sort of upgraded XL style uh, pulley on there. So that allows it to use a toothed drive belt. Um, the more standard style would be like this. And this just has grooves cut in it. So it uses an O-ring or a twisted O-ring style of belt. And I guess the advantage with the O-ring would be that it has less alignment issues. It's easier uh, to keep in alignment, I suppose. And this has a more positive drive because of the teeth on the belt and the pulley. This particular unit is made by Rigetti Rodolfi, I guess that is. Um, and it says on the box that it is a K514 for the model number. I didn't buy it directly from them. I bought it from another site. I'll put a link in the description because Generally, when I see this pump, it only includes this pulley. I knew I wanted the XL style pulley. Um, this one included both of them. And I paid just under $50 for the pump itself. And I think it was closer to $60 by the time I shipped it. So roughly the same price that I paid for my Bosch electric pump. When I look this pump up elsewhere, I just see the standard pulley. So I assume that the company that I bought it from added the XL pulley themselves. And the XL pulley was a little bit disappointing to me. On closer inspection, every single one of the teeth or cogs on here has very sharp edges on it. And when you look at it from the front, you can see that this pulley has a bunch of holes. It looks like what they did is um, they cut this down on a lathe and then they used a drill just to drill through here and create those teeth. And it left it with a whole lot of sharp edges. And if you try to run a belt on something with sharp edges, that's going to lead to issues. I could try to round off and sand down each one of these teeth to make sure they're nice and smooth and won't shred a belt. But when I look these pulleys up, they're basically $10 to $20 for something this size, depending on the exact tooth count. So I am just going to end up replacing this for peace of mind, basically. Before I go any further, I do want to disclose that this was not my idea. We actually had a forum member named Larry. His screen name was Spaz12. And he had a super tricked out Yamaha, basically a show scooter. Um, it had, I believe, an, a Melosi MHR 77 setup on it. And uh, I don't know how you say it, Bitolo, maybe, um, racing ignition. And he wanted to come up with some way that he could ride a scooter around his town at the time of Las Vegas without worrying about the water pump, um, worrying about it overheating, obviously, because I don't think he had any charging on that uh, racing ignition system. So he actually saw someone else on another forum, apparently, uh, which is no longer around. I believe it was Zuma Forums that had ran a cart pump. And then he had his motor sent away and had somebody set up a cart pump like this on his with the belt drive. So that's how I initially saw it. Of course, that makes it a little bit easier for me because I have the benefit of seeing how it was set up on his engine. I also know that it did at least work for a while. I don't know how much time he put on it. Um, the engine's actually been sold to someone else that still has it. Um, but I saw videos of Larry riding it on the Vegas Strip. 
working setup for him and he was kind enough to count the teeth on the uh, water pump pulley as well as the crank pulley and posted pictures of how his uh, crank pulley was mounted to his ignition rotor. So I have all the advantages there of at least seeing that it was a working setup and basically how they got it to work and what speed it was driven at. I know that Larry was using a 16 tooth crank pulley paired with a 24 tooth water pump pulley. So that means his water pump would be driven at basically two thirds the speed of his crankshaft or about 66.6666 etc percent of the crankshaft speed. And doing a little bit of math that comes out to a little over 1300 RPM for the water pump if the engine is idling at 2000 RPM and if you rev the engine all the way out to 14,000 RPM then the water pump would be spinning a little over 9000 RPM. And those are probably decent numbers to work with because I know they worked for him for a little while but I wanted to do some more research of my own because I can swap out the pulleys um, and change the drive ratio within reason. Since this is a cart pump, the first thing that comes to my mind is to try to figure out how fast the carts actually drive this pump. And the carts use a different setup than what we would on the scooter. So the scooter is going to drive the pump by the crank. The carts are driving the pump based on the axle speed. So they have a pulley on the axle that has a belt attached to the pulley on the water pump. So then it gets a little bit more complicated because you can't just find the engine RPM. You actually need to figure out the RPM that the axle would be turning at speed. Trying to figure out the axle speed was basically a bit of guesswork on my part. I suppose I could have contacted some manufacturers or maybe cart racers um, and tried to see if they knew what speeds they drove the water pump at or what speed the axle was going. But I just did some searching and I found that they most commonly use a 10 to 11 inch diameter tire. Um, 125cc carts seem to be the most popular and those have a range of something like 65 to 80 miles per hour. At least that seems to be very common from what I saw and most commonly they're somewhere between 70 75 miles per hour topping out so if you take those numbers use the tire diameter circumference um, work out the ratios of the gears etc then basically it looks like the carts would be driving the water pumps at somewhere between 5,000 to maybe a little over 8,500 rpm and again, that could vary a lot depending on exactly what tires, how fast the cart goes, exactly what gearing they use, etc. But maybe as a rough range, something like 5,000 to 8,500 RPM. So with that said, it looks like if I use the same setup that Larry had, then I might be overdriving the pump a bit um, when I was topped out at 13,000, 14,000 RPM. And it might be better for me to drive the pump a little bit slower. So my initial thought was maybe I should go for something like a 50% drive ratio. So if my engine was spinning 14,000 RPM, then I'd be spinning the pump at about 7,000 RPM. But I want to put some more effort into trying to figure out what might work best for me. A couple of the reasons that I'm willing to put some effort into research is because, first off, if I drive the pump too fast, there's a possibility that I could even have cavitation in the system or it may just go beyond its most efficient point and also the harder I'm driving the pump the more horsepower I'm taking from the engine so if I could drive the pump a little bit less it might actually allow me to free up horsepower um, compared to what others have driven the pump at. You've seen me testing the PWM and how much flow I seem to need that way and I've also done research in the past about various water pumps to find out how much they would flow before I ever bought an electric water pump and even when I first got into liquid cooling to get an idea of what I actually needed. So I have a rough idea of the flow that I need. The problem is when I look for flow numbers on these water pumps for the carts, I don't find anything. So that leaves me with trying to come up with flow numbers myself. I suppose the obvious solution to some would be to mount the water pump to the engine, drive it, test it that way, and then adjust your pulley size from there. I would actually rather know what pulleys I'm using before I ever mount it to the engine and thankfully I have a tool that might help me with that. I'm going to go off track here for just a minute because this is kind of cool. wanted to share it with you guys. Um, way back in March, just before all this COVID stuff really started ramping up in the U.S., I had the privilege of going to South Carolina and meeting up with John, that's 190 Mech, same guy that builds the peace pipes, and Scott, old geek, both from the 49cc Scoot forums. I've talked to those guys for years because another member, Ryan Ott, who is from Pennsylvania, You've also heard me mention him in videos most likely, uh, was making a trip down there to pick up a motorcycle from Scott. So 
years ago, John had apparently built a uh, Kawasaki 250 Ninja. He took the 254 stroke out and swapped in a 252 stroke. I believe it's from an RD 250. Um, and that got passed along to Scott at some point, and then Scott was passing it along to Ryan if he would just come pick it up. So Ryan was kind enough to say, hey, if you want to ride along and meet these guys, come with me. Like, I got to pay for the gas and stuff anyway, so you might as well ride along. So super cool. Anyway, I got to meet those guys. I will put a clip of the, uh, the Yamasaki in here so you guys can see it, because if you're a two-stroke fan especially, you got to check this out. While I was there, John sent me home with this. So this is basically a really chopped up Chinese Minarelli engine. You can see he's cut off the uh, CVT area, some of the cylinder area, etc. Because he wanted to use it as an ignition test rig. And he made up a shaft to go through there. Instead of just using a crankshaft, he's got just a shaft that he made to go through there. So the flywheel can attach on one side. And on the other side, it's got an XL drive pulley. That way, it can be driven by this router motor. So you can see he's also chopped up a router and mounted all that stuff on there. And this was intended to be used to test out ignitions. He also put this plate on the side. It's a metal plate. And he's got sort of a timing pointer, basically, for lack of a better description, a rotor there. And when you run this thing, you can actually see the spark uh, jump from here to this plate. So you can actually time it out without having to worry about any kind of delay from a timing light or something like that um, if you were really trying to get precise with an ignition test. The router plugs into a variable speed control. That way you can change the speed that the shaft is being driven at and test whatever RPM you want for your ignition systems. This is actually the first time that I've taken it out and tried to use it. And pretty much all that I've changed from what he gave me is I added a connector here just to make it a little easier to connect the CDI. And I just installed one of my uh, tuning tacks here. That way I could read the RPM. Before I talk about what I'm going to try to do with it, let me show you its intended operation because it's kind of cool to see. From testing with attack, I found that it will spin this shaft at about 12,000 RPM. And I talked to John and he said that it was spinning about 11,500 for him. Um, I do know that it takes a minute to spin up to 12,000, so I'm not sure if he left it running or not. But basically our numbers are pretty close to each other. And this is a 25,000 RPM rated router, but you can see that it's got a much larger pulley here on the crank than it does on the router, so it's underdriving the crank pulley here. It probably doesn't take a lot of imagination to figure out that since these are XL pulleys and my water pump uses an XL pulley, my next step was going to be to try to figure out how to use this to drive the water pump. And that way, if I could measure RPM, I could set this at a certain RPM and then measure the flow, and I could kind of chart out the flow of the pump and decide how fast I wanted to drive it on the scooter. So my first thought was... Since I have an RPM set up for this ignition tester, this sort of makeshift crankshaft here, just to leave that in place, maybe machine down the end of this to put a pulley on there, and then drive the water pump as well. But then I figured I don't have an additional pulley around here, an extra pulley to put on there, so I've got to buy that anyway. So maybe it would make more sense to buy an RPM readout setup. So I looked around on Amazon, and I found that I can get an RPM readout setup for similar money to buying a pulley, except the pulley that I buy um, may be basically a waste of money after I'm done with this because I may not use it again. The RPM setup, when I'm finished with it on here, I may be able to put it on my mini lathe and have an RPM readout for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and order that and try to figure out how to set up this water pump 
to run uh, on this rig off of the router. This definitely isn't the sturdiest setup I've ever seen. It's just a piece of all thread going into the case with a couple of nuts to lock the water pump in place there. But I'm hoping it will work well enough for me to get a few tests in. I just got the stuff for the RPM readout in. And you can see it's just a small screen. Little circuit board there comes with a wiring harness. Uh, it's got a sensor and a magnet and it comes with some instructions. Basically what you've got to do is put this magnet on something that rotates and then have this sensor close enough to that magnet that it can catch a signal from it when it passes. So my initial thought was to put the magnet right here on the router and then I could just do the math um, with the pulley ratio and figure out the RPM. But since I'm not planning on using this pulley anyway, I think I may remove it and see if I can take off this flange and maybe grind a small flat spot here. That way I can mount a small magnet and if I do that, I can get a direct RPM reading right off of the pump. This is the first time I've tried to use this setup exactly this way to cut a flat like that. So let me show you what I did real quick. Normally this would be centered with the chuck so it would cut, try to cut right into the center of this. All I did was put a stack of washers under there to jack it up and then cut across the top with the carbide cutter. And the spindle was locked here just with a pair of vice grips. I had a bungee cord around here and the lathe was unplugged so that there was no way it could come on. You may have noticed that I put two holes in this shaft that I made to hold the pulley. The reason is I drilled this one the first time and thought the set screw could just go all the way through and then I found that the threads in this pulley are barely there to the point that I can take this set screw and push it right through. So I actually had to re-drill the shaft and then tap it for M5 threads. Obviously since this pulley is aluminum, I can't just stick the magnet on there to get it to hold. So I'm going to have to use epoxy. I'll probably use this JB Clear Weld. Um, but since I've got to have another magnet anyway to go on the lathe, I went ahead and ordered a whole kit of 100 magnets on Amazon pretty cheap. So I'll probably use a smaller one on there. Um, but before I do, I'm going to go ahead and get this digital readout wired up as per their instructions. I did also pick up a 9 volt AC adapter that had this little adapter with it to make it easy to uh, hook wires to it. So I'll get all that set up by their instructions and then I want to make sure that I'm putting the magnet on the right way because it does matter um, which way you flip the magnet over which pole is facing outward. <laughs> 
tack appears to be working all right. I don't see any issues with the belt drive at the moment. So the only thing I'm really worried about now is if this will actually drive the water pump steadily enough at a steady RPM so that I can get good readings for tests because it seems like the RPM wants to vary and I'm not sure but that may be related to the fact that I have a small pulley on the water pump and a larger pulley on the router. I think it would be better the opposite way but again I was trying not to buy more pulleys just for testing. It may get worse um, when I start putting load on the pump by moving fluid but we'll find out. I've got it all set up. I've got a hose going into a five gallon bucket full of water. I've got red food coloring in the water just to make it easier to see because the outlet hose is clear. I've got another bucket there so I can transfer water into it. Um, and I started, I primed it up. You've got to pour water into the outlet to prime these pumps. Um, so I got it primed up, started messing around with it a little bit, and then realized that this isn't going to work. Actually, it will work, but it has an RPM limit. So. I started testing on here, priming it up and such, and when I cranked the RPM up, it got to about 4,000 RPM, and then the water pump started jumping around. Uh, I messed around a little bit, and I realized that I didn't have enough belt tension. So I tightened this about as much as I really can, uh, just the way it's set up, and then RPM got up to close to 6,000, and then the pump started jumping around. And I think that with the way this flexes, I'm just not going to get it much better than that. So if I want to test above five to 6,000 RPM, I'm probably going to have to make a bracket or something to keep this more secure. And let me just show you what it does real quick. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I got this eighth inch steel flat bar out because what I was planning to do was make a bracket that bent up here and bolted onto this. And then went up here and bolted to the uh, platform that this all sits on. To try and strengthen it up a bit and then i thought wait a minute there's a good bit of weight on this board so what if i just slid this under and then i zip tied the back here to put tension on it and that's not the perfect setup but it seems to work at least i can get it over 7,000 rpm so my initial thought was i probably wouldn't want to drive this thing at more than half engine speed which would be 7,000 rpm and it looks like i can at least get there now here's my plan since I've got a limited amount of water, and it's actually pretty difficult to get this set to a certain RPM, you can see it jumps around quite a bit sometimes. I'm going to leave both hoses in one bucket and try to get that set up. And then once I've got that about as stable as I can get it, so these will probably be, you might as well say if I'm testing at 1000 RPM, it's roughly 1000 RPM. Um, once I've got that stable, then I will transfer the hose into the other bucket and set my timer and measure for 30 seconds. I don't think I can do a full minute on a lot of these settings because I think it might push too much water to do a minute. So I'm going to try 30 seconds. It's easy to do the math from there for liters or gallons per minute and such. So we'll see if that works. After each test, I'll have to transfer the water from the collection bucket into something so I can measure it, and then into the supply bucket again and repeat. And I'll have to do multiple tests because most likely it's not going to be incredibly accurate anyway, but if I average the results, hopefully I can increase the accuracy a bit. So needless to say, I'm going to be here for a while. I've only done my three tests for 1000 RPM and already the router is getting pretty hot. The body right here, when I checked it with a non-contact thermometer, was around 150 degrees. So I've got a fan blowing in the area and it looks like I'm going to have to give it some breaks. Yeah. 
think I'm going to have to switch to 20 second tests after this because this is a 30 second test at 4000 RPM. It's moving that much into this container. You can see there's not very much left in there. And these are the biggest things I have around. So I'll just switch to 20 seconds when I move to 5000 RPM and then multiply my result by 3. <laughs> Even a 20 second interval pretty much filled up the bucket with a 6000 RPM test, so I'm going to have to move it back to 15 seconds and try 7000 RPM. I had to shut down that 7000 RPM test because I started smelling something, realized that this was hot, and when I looked at the wall I could see a bluish light, like there are sparks in the back of the router, so I shut it down. It's now the next morning. I came out in the garage, I was going to fire this up and see if I could retry the 7000 RPM test, but when I went to turn it on, nothing at all happened. Probably not a good sign, I think I've actually killed the router. Um, so that's something I'll need to replace in the future. The good news for right now is that I think I've got enough data from the water pump test to make whatever decision I'm going to make. Quick update, you can see I've taken this apart, I wanted to find out if there was anything obvious in there that I may have missed. I don't know a whole lot about electric motors, but I am pretty sure that it's a bad thing when both brushes are chipped that badly. So I looked it up online, and it looks like brushes for this would be roughly $25. Um, it's an old model, I don't have a whole lot of options that actually match up to it from what I see. So I've also seen a 2 horsepower router for $50. Guy says he used it on one project, and it has easily replaced brushes where they have um, Basically where you just take a screw out of one side and you can replace the brushes. So I'm considering doing that instead if I do work with it. But at any rate, um, doesn't really matter for this project right now because again, I've got enough data for what I'm doing. Here's a look at the flow rates that I recorded. As you can see, it's very linear, going up roughly 7 liters per minute for every 1000 RPM. So I was surprised to see that it was that stable all the way across where I could measure it at least. Now let me show you some data for other water pumps that I've either collected or tested for myself. And if you look at my numbers from the stock water pump, it's roughly comparable to that, um, fairly close. Who knows what it does at high RPM, the stock water pump, but at least at low revs, this one's fairly similar. If you look at the Bosch pad electric pump information, you can see that this cart pump should match it by about 2000 pump RPM, or just a little over and after that it's going to far exceed it and actually by 3000 RPM it will exceed every pump that I have listed here so the maximum flow should be no issue as long as I spin this thing at at least 3000 RPM when it's wound out the next step is to figure out the drive ratio that I want to use and what pulleys I need to get that so the first thing that I did was I measured the water pumps impeller shaft and it uses a 5 16 inch impeller shaft, so it needs a pulley with a 5 16 inch inside diameter. And if that is robust enough to handle uh, the water pump drive, then that is probably what I'll try to use on the crankshaft as well. So I started looking at 5 16 inch um, pulleys. And what I found is the smallest pulley that I can get with that inside diameter, at least from McMaster Car where I was looking, is a 12 tooth pulley. And that's fine. Um, if I went down to quarter inch, I could go to, I believe it's a 10 tooth, and then even smaller, I think you can get 8 teeth. But uh, 12 tooth should work just fine for me. So then I saw what pulleys um, they had available that would be in a rough range. The high end of the range that I was considering was about a 50% drive ratio. So that would mean that I'm driving the pump between 1,000 and 7,000 RPM because my engine speed is basically 2000 RPM at idle and 14,000 RPM max. And on the other end of that, I was considering as low as a 30% drive ratio, which would mean I would drive the pump at 600 RPM when the engine's idling, and it would max out at about 4,200 RPM at my max RPM on the scooter. I'm not really concerned about the high RPM, because as you've seen, by 3000 RPM it outperforms all of the electric pumps. So I think there's plenty of flow as long as I spin it at least that fast. So my main concern about RPM 
is not to spin it faster than I really need to or not too much faster because it's going to eat up horsepower and I would assume at some point the flow is going to drop off or there could be cavitation etc. So my main concern was actually idle RPM because I was afraid if I use the 30% pulleys it's only spinning the pump at 600 RPM when I'm idling roughly and I'm not sure how much it flows at that point and I couldn't turn the pump down um, on the router rig to even test it at that low of RPM it just kind of cut out so if I went with 50% it's spinning at 1000 RPM and I know what it does there and that seems like enough to be adequate um, but I really don't want to spin it up to 7000 RPM on the big end so what I ultimately decided on was that I want to use a 40% drive ratio basically right in the center of all this which is the 1230 uh, pulley setup and that should spin it at 800 rpm at idle and 5600 rpm when I'm at 14,000 engine rpm and I think that that might be a pretty good ratio to get good cooling without eating up any excess horsepower the good news is if I'm off by a little bit then it won't be that hard to change the pump pulley out later so I went ahead and ordered the 12 tooth and 30 tooth pulleys. While I was waiting for the pulleys to arrive, I started trying to do some of the editing for this video. And in that process, I was trying to find a picture or a video of a cart axle driving the water pump, which you actually saw earlier in the video. And during that, I stumbled upon a magazine article from a karting magazine called Room International. And it was issue N.200 from February of 2018 where they were testing water pump drive speeds and cooling they used an axle pulley that included basically three pulleys into one so they had three different tooth counts on one assembly and that allowed them to drive the water pump at different speeds and also made it quick and easy for them to switch between water pump drive speeds and then they took the cart out on a test track and they measured RPM as well as the temperature of the coolant in various locations and what they found was they actually got the best cooling when the pump didn't spin over 5,500 RPM. Then the next test, they spun it out just over 7,500 RPM at some points of the track. And the cooling degraded. And then they spun it even faster at over 8,000 RPM. And the cooling got still worse. The magazine article didn't have an answer for why this was happening. They basically said they may touch on it again in a future issue. And... I've never seen that issue. It may be out there though. So that leaves me with the question of does the pump actually decrease flow at higher RPM or is it maybe an efficiency issue like the pump just takes a lot of power to drive when you uh, try to spin it up too fast or what exactly is happening. And realistically this is somewhat irrelevant to me because I shouldn't drive the pump anywhere over 6000 RPM anyway. Um, but just for curiosity, I'd like to find out what the answer is. It's all set up with a new router now. It was actually pretty simple the way John had it laid out. It didn't take much work for me to swap this one on here. Uh, this one actually didn't even need the handle mounted to the board like the old one because it's got a switch in the back. It also has the brushes that are easy to change uh, right from the side. You don't have to take the whole thing apart. And if the ratings are correct, this is 2 horsepower and 28,000 RPM, where the old one was 1.5 horsepower and 25,000 RPM. I got everything set up again and I went back and tested at 7,000 RPM. And what I found is that it flowed 62 liters per minute at 7,000 RPM. And that's 20 liters a minute more than it flowed at 6,000 RPM. So before it had been going up by 7 liters a minute per 1,000 RPM roughly. And now all of a sudden it jumps up 20 liters per minute in 1,000 RPM. And that didn't seem right to me. So I decided to go back and redo all of the tests. 
what I found when I retested. And by the way, I did 15 second intervals on the test all the way to 7,000 RPM. Above that, I did 10 second intervals because I was worried about the amount of flow that it would have and draining the buckets down. And you can see that across the board, it actually flowed more everywhere than it did initially. So something was up with my first test. Here's what I think happened. Let's say this is the supply bucket. There was a hose going in there and it sat very near the bottom of the bucket on the first test because I was concerned about sucking up all of the water in the bucket, not having it run dry for the testing. So I had it really close and I noticed that there is a lot of suction on this hose when that water pump is being driven, especially at high RPM. So I think that it actually sucked itself to the bottom of the bucket or near the bottom of the bucket and really slowed down the flow. On the second set of tests, I was very careful about that. That's part of why I ran shorter duration tests and I left this hose higher up so that it was further proximity from the floor of the bucket, less chance that it got sucked anywhere near anything and it should have plenty of room to draw in water. And on that set of tests, I got a lot higher numbers than I did when it was very close to the bottom. So that's what I at least believe happened um, for the discrepancy there. So flow increases all the way up. I test at 8,000 RPM and it's doing 68 liters per minute. And then I try to test at 9,000 RPM and it suddenly drops off by 20 liters per minute. I tried to test again at 10,000 RPM to see what happened and it was the exact same flow. Now I did see what looked like air to me coming out of the pump at that point and I wasn't sure if that was cavitation or aeration or I was just seeing how hard the pump was pushing water or something going on at that point. That made me curious enough that I chopped up the hoses that I had so that I could have a little bit of clear hose on the inlet and a little bit of clear hose on the outlet because I thought perhaps that way I could see how much air was going into the pump versus how much air was coming out and maybe that would give me some idea of whether it was aeration or cavitation. And here's what that looked like. At least to my eyes, it looks like there is a lot more saturation of air in the outlet compared to the inlet. Now the problem here is that I really don't know for certain what we're looking at still because I just don't have enough experience with pumps and flow, etc. to know 100% what's happening. There's definitely aeration. Um, you can see that there's air coming in on the inlet side, but it looks way, way more saturated, especially at high RPM on the outlet side. So I don't know if that is actually cavitation that's causing so much more air or if it is just the effects of any air going in and what happens with a disturbance from the impeller when it goes um, through the pump. So if you're experienced in this, if you know for sure what you're looking at, then go ahead and share the information that you have with us in the comments or share your opinion of what we're looking at in the comments section. Um, Either way, again, doesn't affect me. I won't be driving the pump nearly that fast. And from what I'm seeing, I wouldn't suggest that anyone tries to drive the pump that fast um, if they try to do this on their scooter. But with that said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on and wrap this video up. The next time you see a TPR video, I should be trying to actually install the pump on the scooter. So. Thanks for watching. Please stay tuned. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more.